Hello YouTube, in this hypertrophy series, I'm going to talk to you about absolute and relative intensity. If you don't know what intensity is, you can check the playlist I defined the term. So in here, I'm going to delve into the two separate values of intensity that you need to use in your program because they apply to every single aspect of muscular fatigue and it's key that you understand it if you want to have very prolific sessions. So what I personally call absolute intensity and that is going to be our benchmark value is going to be your ability to move weight when you are in a fresh state. So that's the weight and the 100% strength you can exert when you haven't done anything before, when the muscles are not tired. You understand that this is going to be a virtual value and it's a little bit unrealistic because you can scarcely expect to always have that absolute intensity to be fully there since you could experience fatigue from a previous session, you could have overdone your warm-up sets, all of these could have an influence on that. We're going to say that this absolute intensity is going to be as close as a state of freshness as possible. So that's where you should be able to exert the max amount of efforts and where your lifts should be the strongest. That also means that you are not at your absolute intensity rate when you're not warm because you're not able at that point to lift max loads because the muscles are not pumped with blood, the synovial fluid is not uh, flooding the joints, etc, etc. That's important that I define this, uh, this value because the relative intensity that goes afterwards is always going to be correlated with that because this absolute intensity doesn't change or at least if it changes, it changes very slowly. Why? Because the only thing that can mo uh, motivate it to change is going to be strength progression. So you'll see that from session to session, it's barely going to move. The value that is going to be the most mobile is going to be the relative intensity. And the relative intensity is going to be the state of the intensity once this absoluteness is broken, once you cannot expect to be at 100%. When that absolute intensity is going to be the most relevant and when you want to utilize it at its full potential is during the strength work. It's also the reason why we open sessions with strength work because that's when we're the strongest, that's when we can accumulate the most tonnage and that's when the application of strength is going to be the, make the most sense because of the rep ranges we use and it has to happen at the start of the workout because of what I explained. That doesn't mean that this is the most important part of the training in terms of total but it might be in terms of relative uh, selection, meaning that if you had to pick one thing in the training that you couldn't skip, it would be strength work. But just because the strength work is going to consume our absolute intensity doesn't mean that we should stop training afterwards because most of the progress you're going to make in total tonnage is going to come from the rest of the program, what follows the strength work. And all of that is going to take place within relative intensity windows because you are already spent, quote unquote. Your muscular endurance and the, the extreme ability of the muscle to push the most weight is spent. But that's a good thing because now we enter that realm of relative intensity. And what that means is that in correlation with the absolute intensity, we're going to have to make sure that we still move relevant loads. And that can only really exist and happen if you pay attention to the absolute intensity because our goal is to be able to repeat movements, movement patterns that are going to tire the muscles to a point where we recognize that our ability to go back to baseline is not relevant anymore and that's when we call it quits. And that can only be done, as I said, via the absolute intensity referential because let's say you can squat 400 pounds, okay? If you start getting into a point in the training where you've done so much work that now squatting something like 260 for four or five reps is not possible anymore. This is a clear indication that the muscle is spent and you're starting to exist within irrelevant intensity windows. But that reflection and realization cannot happen if you don't take into account your absolute intensity. Why? Because if you just base it on relative intensity, the relative intensity evolves with you throughout the workout. And the more you work, the lower it gets. So if you base all of your percentages and workloads and hard sets on that value, you're going to be training for 10 hours because you'll still be able to move. 
And there exists something within what we call the baseline as something that I would call an irreducible baseline. It's, a, it's something that I will define in the future, but it's a weight, it's a load that no matter how much you work, you will never not be able to move that weight. For example, if you have a max squat of 300 pounds, there can be no point in the workout where 135 is not going to be movable unless you are highly diminished by a pump, by structural failure or by an injury, your muscular endurance is never going to be so short that that weight cannot be moved. But should you still move that weight? The question, the, re the answer is no. Why? Because compared to your absolute intensity, 135 represents an intensity window that is irrelevant. And that is why that absolute value needs to be always in your mind. Now, does it mean that you have to do one rep maxes to determine this? No. I personally use percentages. I don't use uh, RPEs. But it works just as well for hypertrophy. Why? Because you can determine your percentages with rep work. You don't necessarily have to test your one rep max. I personally don't know what my rep, one rep max is. And once you also realize that your one rep max strength doesn't strictly correlate to your rep strength, you'll also understand that this is not something you absolutely need to do. You can base percentages out of a four rep max, six rep max, etc. Of course, the lower you go, the more precise it's going to be. But it really is up to you and what you want to do. For me, for example, I never go lower than four reps on the squats. I can still program very accurately within that absolute intensity window because it gives me a clear indication of what I should be moving in terms of weight. And the, the value and the importance of these two things are going to help you create sessions that are going to be just long enough that they promote progression without overshooting you in terms of fatigue and without just being a waste of time because if you start doing uh, some exercise some movement patterns some sets that are not correlated with anything relevant in terms of the absolute intensity absolute intensity and the ability of the body to move when it's fresh you're wasting your time in my opinion because even though the body is tired, even though the relative intensity has, has, has run its course and you are now deep within the fatigue pit, what is stimulated is always correlated with that absolute intensity. Okay? So what I want to say by this is the body doesn't devolve within the set to then be challenged by weights that didn't challenge it before. What is being challenging is the fact that the muscle is pre-tired. But the stimulus you will get from these sets is not worth it, in my opinion, because it's junk volume. And this is important to keep in mind. I think this is a good, a, a good definition of junk volume. Junk volume are sets that happen outside of window of relevance compared to the absolute intensity, not the uh, relative intensity. So keep that in mind. Track your relative intensity because, as I said, the absolute intensity is fixated, so you won't have to pay too much attention for it. Once you know where it is, it's there. But the evolution of the intensity within the sets is what you need to pay attention to. Because from lift to lift, it varies. If you, if you multiply the same movement pattern in a training, it varies, etc. But it's, it's what is teaching you what is challenging the muscle and when you're just wasting your time. So it's, it needs to really be uh, paid attention to because it will never betray you if you are actually giving it a lot of thoughts. So I'm going to leave you with that for these two values. I will be using those terms a lot because as I explained, they help with a ton of concepts of hypertrophy and programming that I discuss all the time. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.